Well, hello there, and welcome back again, Dang Teach at CCSD. Hope, hopefully, you're having a good day. All right, today's lesson: Sig Codes, Part Two of Three. So last time we covered uh, what is it? Verb, number, dosage form, and route. Uh, today we'll cover uh, the last two: frequency and any additional. So hopefully you've made your flashcards for C codes part one, and you got them uh, pretty much down. Uh, we're gonna add to that with the frequency of administration and the additional information from the doctor. So as a quick review, those six elements are verb, number, dosage form, route, frequency, and additional information. So try to decipher uh, in that order as much as possible. So here's that rundown. We got no verb code given, but we're given a code for numbers, dosage form, route, frequency, and additional information. So no verbs are ever given oh, once in a while. You might get AAA, which means apply to the affected area, or you'll get S slash S, which means swish and swallow or swish and spit out. But if it's not given, then you're going to have to first look at the route of administration. And then secondarily, sorry, secondarily, the dosage form. There you go. So first route, then the dosage. Frequency. So we have two types of dosing frequency. The first one is around the clock, and they'll look similar to this. You'll have a Q, then a number, and usually H for hours. Sometimes you'll have minutes or days. And the when awake dosing, they'll look like this. There's still Qs, but there's no numbers as in here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, etc. So that's how I tell them apart. I look for that number. If it's a number around the clock if it doesn't have a number most likely it's when awake dosing so what do these stand for Q most likely is gonna be every so it's every whatever hours as specified so Q2H every two hours Q4H every four hours etc right all the way down to every 24 hours and you can have any amount of time you want in between as well and it doesn't have to be hours, it could be minutes. When awake dosing, so you're not gonna give this to the patient if they're asleep. So the around the clock dosing, you do give it to them. Q, usually every, so every day. We got two wheels on a bicycle, so two times a day. Three wheels on a tricycle, three times a day. There's four wheels on a quad, QID. HS. HS stands for hour of sleep, but we want to make sure we specify the nighttime dose so they don't take it when they take a nap. So we'll translate QHS as every night at bedtime. ACPC. So AM comes before PM. So that's how I remember AC is before meals. And since PC or PM comes after AM, then that's going to be after meals. And if you need to take it with meals, it's just going to be a C with a line on top meals. Okay, let's further explore the differences. So how many times a day for Q12H dosing and BID dosing. So we have 24 hours in a day. If we divide it by Q12, then we would get two doses. BID, as we already know, two wheels on a bicycle. So two times a day. Q8H and TID. So in a 24 hour period, if we take it every eight hours, that's going to give us three doses. Three wheels on a tricycle. Q6H. Well, let's do that one. 24 divided by 6. You're going to get 4 doses per day. 
and QID, four wheels on a quad, also four times a day. But as mentioned, this is going to be around the clock dosing, and this is going to be when awake. So that means if this patient, so what that means is for around the clock dosing, if the patient is asleep in the middle of the night, you might have to wake them up. So you must give it exactly for the best therapy. An example would be antibiotics. We got to keep a therapeutic range within your body. If it falls too low, then superbugs might form. The strong bacteria might survive and recolonate your body. Or if we give you too much, a lot of antibiotics can become toxic. Toxic to the ears, the kidneys, or even the liver. Let's go over some additional information. So PRN is as needed. PPA and PRNP are both going to be as needed for pain. So PRNP is the traditional one, but a lot of times, uh, depending on your geographical area, a lot of doctors, pharmacists might come up with their own novel ones. N slash V, nausea and vomiting. CP, chest pain. MRX, that means uh, you may repeat, and the X will indicate how many doses. NTE, not to exceed. UD, until done. And UG, sorry, UD is as directed, commonly mistaken for until done. So I was thinking this, and I said it instead of as directed. But UG is until gone. All right, practice, practice, practice. So for this practice, we're going to provide all six elements of the translation, if required. So the first thing we have to do is identify the verb. So PO is take. So we're going to take one to two tablets by mouth, BID, two wheels on a bicycle, two times a day as needed. Tenomel's POQ6HUG. PO again, so that makes it easy. We know that's take. Tenomel's, ooh, two teaspoons full. Every six hours until gone. So we'll take two teaspoons full by mouth every six hours until gone. Uh, these are the examples you want to refer to as you're doing the uh, homeworks and in class assignments. I, 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 G, T, T, S, O, U, T, I, D, U, G, U, D. So O, U, that's going to be ojos. Use both. Drops we instill. So we'll instill three drops into each eye three times a day as directed. S, L. Find the verb, find the route in order to get the correct verb. So S, L is going to be place. Place one tablet under the tongue every five minutes as needed for chest pain, not to exceed three doses. And this is very common for nitroglycerin sublingual angina medication. If it's not relieved, most likely that's going to be a heart attack. Rectally, so a lot of different dosage forms can go into the rectum, in this case suppository. Don't forget them. Don't forget to tell them to unwrap. So we'll unwrap and insert one suppository into the rectum every 12 hours for three days. One patch Q7D. So a patch is a topical dosage form. So the verb there would be apply. So we'll apply one patch every seven days. And yeah, some patches are 24 hour patches, some are three days, and some are up to seven days. Let's practice some sample prescriptions. So here we got the drug name, L-A-N-O-X-I-N, and the strength. 
So remember notation of numbers. We always have a zero in front of the decimal, and that's for this reason. It could have been Lanoxeno, 125 milligram, but we know it's 0 0.125. Anytime you see a pound sign, that will tell you how much to dispense. But what we're doing today is just the SIG. So we got Roman numeral, lowercase Roman numeral I with the line over the top. This is a PO and that's a QOD. So that's a new one we haven't seen. It's going to translate to take one tablet by mouth every other day. So QOD is not an acceptable abbreviation. So we may have to uh, verify with the pharmacist. Because if you write a skinny O, it might look like Q, QID. Real skinny O. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Here we got the SIG starting here. Here's the drug name, Lasix, the strength, 40 milligrams. So we got tabs 2 POQAM, giving them 60. So we got to go in order. Even though they say tablets first, we're going to tell them to take two tablets by mouth every morning. All right, we got an elixir here. Looks like we're giving them four ounces. So here's Roman numeral one dash Roman numeral two. TSP Q four to six degree. So this is an hour. We got PRN and cough. So the verb, oh, whoa, there's no route. So doctors will many times omit dosage forms route for sake of time. So for this one, there is no route, but we know this is going to be by mouth. So by mouth, we will take. Take one to two teaspoons full by mouth every four to six hours as needed for cough. Next sample prescription, Micro K, 10 MEQ capsules. So I know these are going to be a little bit difficult to read as beginners, but as you learn more drugs, get more acquainted with the SIG codes, uh, you'll be able to fill in the blanks and read it just like, a, just like a sentence. We're going to give them 100. Here the doctor wrote SIG and then colon. So if anything before this colon, you can just go ahead and ignore. So they just put S colon or they'll abbreviate Cigna and put a colon. Uh, or even write out the whole thing, Cigna, and put colon. You can just ignore that. So the real script starts from this point on. So we got Roman number one, P-O-B-I-D. So how does micro K come? Well, capsules, according to the doctor. So the verb is take. We'll take one capsule by mouth twice a day. So for this one, we didn't get the verb. I'm oh, sorry. We didn't get the route. And for this one, we got the dosage form, but it was up here. All right, I want you guys to try this one on your own. And um, for part three, we'll go over these. Or if you want, you can put it in the comments, and we'll see if you're correct. So we have azithromycin, giving them six tablets, and the SIG starts here. And also, we want you guys to try this one as well. We got Tobra Dex Ophthalmic Ointment. So give this guy a try. And the next time I see you guys, we'll go over that. All right. All right. That concludes uh, Pharmacy Sig Codes. Deciphering SIG codes part two. We still have part three where we read more prescriptions. We'll take a look at the inscription, uh, the Cigna, and we'll solve for EDS, estimated supply. EDS, estimated day supply. So again, please make flashcards for the frequency and additional information. Once again, the list I provided you is not fully exhaustive. 
So if there's anything in assignments and homeworks that you haven't seen, please research them. Uh, or you can ask me, work together on uh, the assignments. Once again, thank you for joining us. And make those flashcards, get them down, pack. Uh, we're going to start integrating the SIG codes and the math calculations together. So until next time, you guys have a good one. Dang, da dang, da dang, da dang, dang.